In this video, we're going to look at extreme values. So you might remember seeing the graphs of functions, like, you know, like sine of x, right, which have a lot of, which sort of oscillate a lot. So what we have is something like this. So notice, right, that we have throughout the graph, we have these sorts of, these peak values that tend to come up a lot. Now those peak values are actually, as it turns out, some pretty cool, uh, they tell us they're, some, they're pretty useful to us, right? Because as it turns out, these are the highest and lowest points of the graph for that specific area. We'll get into more specific terminology on that, but essentially these are what we call maximums and minimums. So we have maximums and minimums, right? So this stuff is actually really helpful to us because it tells it can tell us some pretty useful information. So let's look at a, a real life example that sort of demonstrates this. So consider, let's look at some spectroscopy data. So this is some stuff that I pulled out of the lab earlier. And uh, basically what we did is, what we're doing here is we're taking a certain solution, we're flashing some light through it, and we're measuring the absorbance or how much light was absorbed by the solution as a function of the wavelength of light that we flashed, right? So as you can see here, where is our highest absorbance value? Well, that looks pretty high, but the, really the highest value is right about here, right? It's hard to pick one specific value there, but it tends to be, it's approximately around there. So this is just about at around, I think, 650 nanometers, right? Right about there. So we have around 650 nanometers, okay? So that's basically what's happening. So as you can tell here, there's really, there's really two useful pieces of information associated with extreme values, right? So number one, we have the specific height of our peak, and that's this guy right here. But secondly, and sometimes even more useful, is the x value, or where this peak occurs. That would be right around there. So there's really two very useful pieces of information, <clears throat> excuse me, that we have to consider when working with extreme values. So let's put this all together. So these peaks in data are always very interesting because they tell us some pretty cool things. So we want to know the height of these peaks, right, as we just mentioned earlier. But we also want to know where these peaks occur, or the x values. So both of these are very useful, right? Because the height tells us very tells us some pretty cool information. Like it tells us approximately how much, like in this previous, previous example, it showed us how much um, light we were absorbing rel relatively. And where is also really useful. So for example, we learned that the that ma that peak absorbance occurs at 650 nanometers. That actually tells us that the solution is going to be a sort of brownish red solution. So that's actually pretty pretty useful information for us to know there. So we're going to try. Right, so in this video, what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and take all this together and we're going to find this. We can find these using calculus. So what we're going to do is we're going to find out, we're going to learn how we can find all this information using calculus. So that's what this video is really going to be about. All right. So let's revisit this kind of cosine graph here, and let's see if we can figure out um, how we can find extreme values. So I'm going to highlight, let's quickly go ahead and highlight what our extreme values are, just visually. So we have one over here, right? That's going to be a, a maximum. And we also have one down here. It's going to be a minimum. Now I'm gonna give you a quick second to think about what's happening at those two points in terms of calculus. And I'll give you a quick hint, think tangent lines. Well, I'll give you the answer. So notice what's happening here. Notice that around, at only these two specific points, we have a flat tangent line. We have a flat tangent line there we have a flat tangent line here. 
Okay. So basically what's happening is, what we can say is at extreme values, I'm going to say extrema is another way you could hear it, we seem to have flat tangent lines, right? So what this suggests is that at extreme values, we know that f prime of x is going to equal 0, right? So at extreme values, the derivative is going to equal 0. This is indicated by the fact that we have a flat tangent. However, however, let's look at another example. So this is the graph of y equals x cubed. But notice that we also have a flat, notice that we have a flat tangent over here, right? We have a flat tangent over there as well. However, is that an extreme value? No, that's not an extreme value. So that's not an extreme value. However, we still have a flat tangent. So what's going on? So the the key definition here, the key thing we need to realize here is that extreme values occur only at critical points. And remember, critical points is where f prime of x is equal to zero. But not all critical points are extreme, have extreme values. I should say have. Not all critical points have extreme values. So this was illustrated in our two examples, right? So for example, if we, um, if we had a function like this, uh, that looks like this. So that's clearly got a flat tangent up there. So that we know for sure that, sorry, that's not flat, but we know for sure that that's, that's a max or a min, right? However, what if, if we had a function like, like a cubic, for example, So if we had a function that was like cubic, for example, which, which sort of flattened out in the middle, that would not that would still have a flat tangent, but it's not an extreme value, right? So it's important that we really digest this idea that extreme values occur only at critical points because well there's no other there's if the if the first derivative is not zero you won't have a critical point right that's it would look either like this or like this. But not all critical points are extreme values. So that's something I really want you to, um, to really get there. Now the question will arise here, how do we know which critical points are extreme values? Right? So to this extent, that's why we have these two very useful tests called the first and second derivative tests. Right? So these, we will talk, I'll sp I'm going to spend a whole video on each of these. We will go ahead and we'll really dissect how these work and how we can use these to justify or prove that a certain critical point has an extreme value. If you found this video helpful, please do like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, and check out some other videos. See you next time!